Now, COVID-19 has disproportionately impacted the UK's black and Asian communities. Uh, the actor David Harewood wanted to find out why, and he's been exploring the issue for a new BBC documentary. We'll speak to him in a moment. Let's have a look. Almost 65% of the population in Brent are of black African, Afro-Caribbean, Pakistani, Bangladeshi or other minority ethnic origin. How long has this market been here, Mohammed? Oh, over 20 years. You can really see the diversity here. Really every, this... Everybody's here. So... Africans, and Caribbean, mm -hmm. Asians. Everybody come to this market to sell their wares, mm -hmm. you know? Okay. COVID must have really impacted this community. Of that, you can be sure. The amount of people that died really, really shook the community and, and nobody expected it. Well, as we uh, said, um, David joins us now live on the programme. Uh, good morning to you. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, from Vancouver. Well, I know you're doing some filming over there at the moment. It feels like um, a really powerful story to tell in this documentary. David, why did you want to tell it? It's, it's just a very, actually very, a very personal story. Obviously, when I, when I um, flew back into England at the very, very start of, the, of, 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 uh, of this whole pandemic, um, I, I sort of walked into a kind of wall of information and, and some of the things that were trickling into me were that, that, were that, were that most of the doctors that, were, were, that first died uh, during that first wave of, I think 95% of the doctors that uh, died in that, during that first wave of, of, of COVID were from black or, 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 or Asian backgrounds. And I, I thought, well, I thought, well, why was that? And then the more I thought, kind of learned about it, I, I, I kind of understood that this virus seemed to, seemed to be affecting uh, people of colour uh, disproportionately and obviously being a, p a person of colour I wanted to kind of find out why so this is me just sort of really having a look and, and kind of investigating the reasons why I look at vitamin D I look at, I look at uh, you know the genetics biology um, and just try to investigate exactly um, why this this disease seems to be disproportionately affecting us. I suppose that the, the assumption that uh, maybe we incorrectly make is that there are uh, biological issues involved in that. But through the course of this documentary, you look at the sort of societal factors, don't you? Well, they, I look at them, they just started to reveal themselves. I mean, it's not like they're... It's, I mean, they've been there for a long time. I don't think this has been um, a secret, you know. I mean, health inequality has existed for, 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 for a very, very long time, I think. The coronavirus has really just revealed that, and I think this uh, uh, this this documentary re really, for me, started to unfold. And um, you know, I started to see just just basically how, how you know, uh, societal factors uh, uh, disproportionately impact uh, communities of colour. Yeah, the documentary does, as you said, um, it spells that out quite quite clearly. And you mentioned right at the start of um, our uh, chat here on the programme that it was a personal journey, because you spoke to your sister Sandra as well, didn't you, for this programme? Yes, yes, I did. She's wonderful. The first, first time she's been on the telly with me, but it was great to see her on the... Great to work with her. And, and, we're, and you I, know, yeah, carry on, David. We, no, we, 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 we were sort of... We were kind of reminiscing and talking about, you know, our parents. You know, our parents came here and... And you know, we're in those sort of uh, front-facing, you know, forward-facing roles, cleaners and, and drivers, and uh, um, you know, working in factories, and and you know, many many uh, communities of color are still uh, are still doing those same jobs. And I think we were just we just kind of uh, um, you know just commented on, on on that fact that it seems that you know, we're still having difficulty, as it were, sort of climbing up the social uh, ladder. And if uh, people do watch this tonight, it's, it's called uh, Why is COVID Killing People of Colour? It's on uh, BBC One at, at nine o'clock. They'll hear about um, a theory from America called weathering, a, a, a theory on racism, which, which you talk about in the programme. Um, just explain exactly what that is. Well, um, weathering is a term which, which was uh, Dr um, uh, 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 Geronimus, uh, 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 I think her name is, and she, 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 is, uh, she, she has her study involves involve looking at the the almost the biological age of of black people in america she 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 was suggesting that the stress of racism the stress of dealing uh, of, of living in a uh, under an oppressive system it, uh, almost physiologically ages uh, black people 
it, it, so it's, it's, it's almost like a wearing process, a sort of a sort of weathering process. And it's 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 uh, it's it's a, it's a, a, an, an incredible way of describing living in a society where, where you're continuously sort of under stress and and, uh, um, and and your sort of reality is sort of denied. So it's it's um, I thought it was just a, a, a wonderful term and a wonderful way, wonderful descriptive way of describing that sort of stress. Uh, the documentary touches on uh, the Black Lives Matter movement and the death of George Floyd as well. I know you're in Vancouver at, at, at this time, but um, back here in, in the UK, there's quite a discussion in um, football, particularly at the moment, about uh, taking the knee before games. There are some black players who say uh, they don't want to do it anymore. Some clubs have made that decision as well. They've talked about it maybe running its course and, and being sort of wallpaper, I've, I've seen it described as as well. Do you think that what we saw predominantly last year, has that been a, a positive catalyst? Catalyst for change overall. I, overall, uh, uh, no doubt. It's uh, uh, particularly in America, particularly in corporate America, and particularly you know, I'm particularly working for Warner Brothers right now, and, and you know they have made significant changes uh, uh, since George Floyd, and in terms of management, so the structure, and in, in terms of in terms of uh, the structure of of, of uh, and makeup of crews. So they've made significant changes. But uh, yes, I think you know perhaps the uh, perhaps gestures. Uh, the original gestures that that, that that are now two three years old. Perhaps it is time to perhaps you know move on from that. And I, I you know I, I I would also note that um, racism against black footballers has gone up since um, um, uh, players have been taking the knee. So it it, it seems you know I, I I do think perhaps there's maybe another way of of um, you know addressing the problem, addressing the issue.